Hi, I am Mohit Yadav and I teach at Scalar Academy. After taking more than 200 interviews, I have come to a realization that most people lack one common trait, which is to design a good relational database. Now, why this problem arises? The root cause of this problem can be attributed to that many people come from a NoSQL background and hence they try to denormalize everything and put all the attributes in a single entity. Therefore, it becomes very critical to understand the basic fundamentals of schema design. This will not only help you in clearing the interviews, but it will also help you in building a repo and having technical discussion amongst your peer group. If you are someone who often finds it difficult to convert the real-world requirements into the entity and relationship diagrams, then this video is for you. In this video, we are going to discuss about relational schema design using LinkedIn as an example. We are going to discuss about one-to-many relationship, many-to-many -many relationship. Apart from that, we'll also see when it makes sense to separate two entities even though the columns in both the entities are same. After this video, you'll be able to convert high-level requirements into relational database schema with ease. Now to design any relational data store schema, all you need to do is list down all the features. Then where you need to identify all the entities and relationship that will support your feature list. To do that, underline all the nouns and verbs. All the nouns will then correspond to either entities or it will be an attribute in one of the entities that you have already listed. The verbs will translate into either the status changes or the relationship between two entities. Now let's see this trick in action and design schema for LinkedIn. So let's go ahead and see how to apply those tricks in action. The first feature is that user should be able to view and edit his profile which contains the following information. This gives us a hint that there should be a user entity table. So let's add user entity. It can be a user profile as well. Let's keep it user profile for now. Every entity that you create will have one attribute, which is ID. This will basically be used to uniquely identify a user profile. The other attributes would be coming from the next set of requirements. On top left, a, a user should have profile photo. On the right side of profile pic, we should also show name and contact information. So let's add these attributes inside a user profile entity. So we'll have a profile pic. Profile pic can be stored in two places. One is in the database itself. If you store the profile pic in the database, the amount of storage that is required to store all the information of the users will be very large. So it's wise to store all the images and video links that are associated with a particular profile into a file store like S3, or we can also store them in a CDN, right? So uh, instead of storing the profile pic, I'll store the URI, which will either correspond to S3 or uh, CDN or maybe any other file store as well. The next information uh, that I would have to store is the name and contact information in form of an email or phone number or both. A user can have multiple skills. So there are two options of uh, adding the skills. The first option is add that as a list object in the same user profile table. So if I'm adding this in the form of a list, how that will come up is uh, sample values will be Java, Java script, and so on, right? This poses a one major problem. The major problem is that if I want to find out all the users who have Java in their skills mentioned, so the problem would be that I would have to write something like a select star from user profile where skills like um, star uh, Java star which means that this is going to be a scan operation. So if I have multiple rows in my database, then I will end up scanning all the rows. If I, if I have 1 billion rows, I will scan 1 billion rows. So this approach will not scale. The other downside of this particular approach is that I will not be able to auto-suggest skills to the user because that will be again a scan on all the uh, rows that are present in the database. So what we'll do is we'll add one more entity called skills. Now, this skill, there are two ways of adding skill, right? Uh, either we can have the skill ID, name, and user ID stored directly here. If I do something like this, then 
again auto complete will be slow because there will be multiple users and multiple users will be having multiple skills if you look closely the two entities the user profile entity and the skill entity what is the kind of relationship between these two entities right so user can have multiple skills similarly a skill can be uh, having multiple users right so it's a many to many kind of a relationship to model a many to many kind of a relationship what you should do is you should create a mapping table called user skills this will again all the identities have an id so it will start with the id we'll also have a user id here and skill id and we can remove the user id that was there in the skills object if we read the next set of requirements it states that we need to keep information about educational institutions and employers and if you look closely the attributes over here uh, in the educational institutions and the employers are same so what i can have is i can create a entity called organization inside an organization i can have an id field and all the other fields that are there depicting name start year end year and let's say description and i will need to have one more type uh, this type will store information of institution or company so from the looks of it uh, or for the given set of features this table works uh, really well the challenge over here is that what if i want to add other attributes let's say i want to add cgpa in the educational institution and i want to add salary details inside employers the problem here that comes is that i will have to add cgpa as a one column here and salary also as one more column now depending upon whether the type is institution or company either cgpa will be null or salary will be null now it is not a very good idea to enforce application logic in your database just by looking at the database you should be able to figure out that what are the uh, what each column means so to avoid such kind of a problem and to have you know a, a design that is extensible what we can do is we can split this into two tables one would be a education and the other one would be a company both will have id both will have name it will have start year and it will also have end year type is not required because we have already split the table but this alone will not be able to give me any sense of uh, which user went to this particular university which users went to this particular company now what is the relationship between user and education and user and company we would realize that a user can go to multiple companies and he can also go to multiple institution for completing his education similarly a institution might have multiple students who are, who are studying in, uh, in it in a company also there can be many employees so it's again a many to many kind of a relationship and we have learned uh, in the example above that whenever we have multiple uh, you know many to many kind of a relationship we create map mapping entities so there will be one table for user education and one table for user company the attributes will be id user id and education id education might not be a better word or the better word can be uh, institution over here so we'll have id we'll have user id and we'll have company id as well now if i want to find out all the users who have went to a particular institution what i'll do is i'll go to user education table and i'll query select start from user education where education id equal to the institute id the next requirement is to have recommendations now a particular user can either give recommendations or receive recommendations since this is a list it does not make sense to add this in uh, in the attributes of your particular user it makes sense to have a separate entity so let's go ahead and create a recommendation entity we'll have an id the person who is given the recommendation so let's say user id for that and it will also have a recipient id right do i need to create a mapping table in this case now a particular recommendation will have just one user id and it will also have one recipient that information is actually captured in this particular table so we don't need a mapping table in case of a recommendation so if i want to find out all the 
uh, recommendations that I have, what I'll do is I'll go to recommendation table and I'll select star from recommendations where recipient ID equal to my user ID. So the next requirement is having connections and followers. How connection and follower work is that if A sends a request to B, that means that A will be able to see all the public posts that are made by B. If B accepts that particular connection request, then B will also see all the posts that are made by A. Let's have a design that can model uh, this particular feature set. So we'll have a connection table. Inside this connection table, I'll have an ID. I'll have user 1, user ID 1, and I'll have user ID 2. Whenever a new connection comes in, uh, I'll add that particular row here. And as soon as B accepts the request of A, I'll add one more row. So if I want to find out anybody's followers, uh, all I need to do is uh, select star from connection table where user ID 2 is equal to the given user. So for example, A sent a request to B. So A is a follower of B. So if I want to find out B's follower, I'll need to query the second column, user ID 2. And as soon as it's a bi-directional mapping, I'm adding, up, adding that particular row as well. So I'll be able to find that out as well. The problem, however, is that I'm taking two times the space that sh I should be taking. So to optimize on space, what I can do is have one Boolean column called is accepted. Now if A and B are a connection, not a follower, that means that A sent a request to B and B accepted that particular request, I can keep the accepted flag as true, otherwise it will be false. Now if I want to find out all the followers of A, if accepted flag is true, then I'll query based on use either user ID 1 should be equal to A or user ID 2 should be equal to A. If it is false, then only user ID 2 should be equal to A. The last set of entities that I'm going to talk about is post, comment and like. Let's go ahead and create entities for all of them. So there'll be a post entity. Inside this post entity, we'll have an ID. Now, what is the relationship of a post with a user? One user can have multiple posts, whereas the reverse is not true. One post will be written by just one user. So let's add user ID in the post entity table. Whenever you have one to many kind of a relationship or many to one kind of a relationship, uh, add that attribute of the first entity in the dependent entity. So the first entity over here was user. So we'll have user ID inside post ID, which is the dependent one and some text to go along with it. Similarly, in comment, entity also we'll have an id comment is made by a user so it de uh, comment is dependent on user id comment is also dependent on post because a comment cannot exist independently of a post so we'll also have a post id here again this is an example of a many to one kind of a relationship and it will also have text now for likes we can have two tables one is a post like table inside post like we'll have id post id again uh, one to many kind of a relationship and a user id on a comment like table we'll have the same attributes id comment id and user id if you notice here the post id and comment id are basically the entity ids that this like is made on so for example in post like the entity was post in comment like the entity was comment we can club these two tables together similar to we saw in educational and company combined table will look something like a like like will have an id it will have entity id and entity type now this entity type can be of two types presently uh, either post or comment finally we'll also have the user who has liked this particular thing if i want to add one more entity let's say a user can have uh, vlogs as well so what i'll do is i'll create a vlog table over here and in this type i'll add type equal to vlog as well so without even adding one more table, uh, my like table will work. I hope this video gave you some sense of how to design schema for big systems like LinkedIn. This is just a glimpse of what we teach and how we teach at Scalar. Lastly, we'll keep on adding videos on similar topics. Therefore, please subscribe to our channel to get notifications about new videos. If you have any topic in mind that you want us to cover, please leave the topic name in the comment section. Thank you all for joining in. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel.